All right, guys. Right, this is uh, part two of Battery Lotheringen. Um, I thought before this started, um, I'd show you where we are, where we've been, um, um, and the best way to do that is with a map similar to how I did with Battery Derflinger. Um, so, just here on the table, um, I've got a map here uh, to show you what, where we are, what we've done, etc. So let's have a look at that and I'll give us some bearing um, on what we're looking at. Right, so where are we? Right, well, we're down the bottom section here. This bit here, that's the bunker we looked at in part one. That's the command bunker we looked at with Paul and Malcolm. Um, on the same day, I also went and I had a look at this bunker here, which is the personnel bunker and the lookout tower here. Uh, so that's what we'll be looking at today, these two here. And then since filming the video you're about to see, I've been back um, to uh, Battery Lotheringen and I've also filmed a section for here, for gun number two, which you can see there, and gun number one up here. But I'll show you the what we're looking at. Um, when you come back for part three and four, it should be done in four parts. Um, there may be a fifth one if I go back and do uh, gun point four up here, which is buried. Uh, and so is gun point three, actually all that's buried as well. Four isn't so much buried as it is part buried, part stuck in the overgrowth. Um, I did have a look around with the kids. I might go back and have a look there, but at the minute it's too overgrown. So I'm going to have to wait for the States of Jersey, uh, who, whoever it is, to go and have a bush trimming session. And then maybe I'll be able to do something with four and three for you. But in the meantime, we'll do the rest. So, yeah, we'll cut back, to, we'll cut to me, and we're about to go have a look at this area here, which was a lookout tower. It was also the, there's also a battery, not battery, an electric generator post down here. So we'll go look, look at that, we'll cut to me going and having a look at that now, and then we'll come back to me at the end of the video. One bunker, this is where the ventilation used to come in, where you saw the ventilation room, that's the top section. And then... Over there where Eric is looking, out to sea, taking you some guys, some really nice quiet photos there. This is the top of the periscope that um, Malcolm was talking to us about when we were inside the bunker. So that's one section, and then you've got the other two sections here. You can see the little slots here where they would have, little windows where they would have looked out. And then over there, that would have been a gun point, which we're now going to go have a look at. So let's go have a look at the gun point. So just where Paul is there, that used to be the anti-aircraft bunker. Yeah, so there's a wartime picture of a soldier doing that, heaving the gun round, and that's okay. taken there. So I think before the tower was built, okay. the early emplacement. But then the anti-aircraft gun was moved on top of the tower, and that's the original mount for it on the top. Okay. over the side after the war and the occupation, the side we covered it. Yeah, I think and put it back on. Right, so this is the next one we're going to look at. This is the MP1 Marine Bunker. I have no idea about this one. I don't know anything about this one. I did some research on the command bunker, and I've looked up at the gun points. I have no idea what's in here. So uh, let's go have a look. That took some carving as well, because that's going to be well hard metal. Yeah. Well, they've carved that with. I don't know, it's only with chiselled it. So the Germans did actually use this anchor then? Yeah, it was um, now the seabed outside St. Helier Harbour for 33 years before presented to the society in 77. That's cool. I think the sea cadets all that raised it as an exercise. But we lost during the war for a German ship. I didn't even realise the German ships came here. I thought, because you hear about like the planes and stuff attacking the harbour. Yeah. They never went ever mentions the fact that you had German boats here. So this tower is virtually never used. Um, it only has four observation floors instead of the usual five because one of the batteries it was intended to serve is directly behind it. Right. So the command bunker built behind just made 
soldiers being here obsolete right sort of thing <clears throat> but the islands were meant to be Kree's marine fortresses right uh, Jersey and Guernsey would have had one battery of 438 centimeter guns and then four batteries of 15 centimeter quick firing right. targeted guns Jersey um, Leyland was constructed as a marine battery one and here was marine battery two right the emplacements are ready for the modern 15 centimeter guns both cases never arrived Right. Yeah, the three guns they had on the impl open emplacements were moved moved onto the permanent emplacement. Okay. Later on, the emplacement is the one next to the one with right. the field gun Yeah. Um, the other two batteries, one was at the coop and one was at um, Verklu, which later right. were used for, as artillery batteries at the same site. Yeah. And the 38 centimetre battery was meant to be a Blage Blanc, sort of roughly the area where Communicare is into the south of that now. Yeah, because you've got them there too. We've got there. There's the command ones there. Yes. And you can see that this one here, I take it, it's the one on the left, it's slightly shorter. Yes, because, uh, yeah, probably the 38 centimetre battery would have had the top floor at everyone because it had a longer range and better view, sort of thing. But yeah, then it, whichever marine battery would have had a slit each underneath. So one slit for each of the four marine batteries and one for the 38 centimetre battery. But here, because uh, the battery is built directly behind the tower, they never bothered with the fifth slit and also kept the tower low so it wasn't in the way of the field of fire of the guns behind. I've done enough of the German tunnels now to know that that's HO5. Yes it is, I made that in the <laughs> 90s. That's really cool. Tower right? models I did a long time ago as well. Yeah. That's... The ones at the top of mine. So you made all these? Yeah, back in the 90s, 94, 5 I think. That's both skill and patience. Yeah, like someone one to one scale stuff for bunkers. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to say, like, if anybody like knocks your hand when you're doing that, yeah, I made that's the impressive. 10 5 myself and plastic on the whole thing inside. Uh, the 3.7 pack is like a little model. Right. So I think we've made a bit of pier and all that. Otherwise, okay. hey, there's a name that I know when they're doing it. They used okay. to use the gun mount on the roof as their anchoring point, but we pointed out it's not really well secured. They've yeah. got improper eyes now. But um, there's charity apps out of events like the Immortal Guide use here as well. Okay. And we've got no objection to it. But the bottom two observation floors, the slits are sealed to stop people getting in. Okay. And then the upper two, this one, the one below, these are the only two where they're actually open for viewing. Yeah, because I've noticed, one thing I did notice as I was coming in here, is that it looks like next to this doorway on the other side of the wall, it looks like there's like a uh, there's like an indentation in the wall. Is that like a doorway or is that where there was something? Where about in here or? Just in this side. Here, was that, was that? That's normally for cables for them, like the mains. So there would have been cable in the Distribution box, yeah. The phone, there's, um, yeah, there, that would have been the mounts for the phone. So okay. A telephone matrix there, which right. we've put in, you can see the four bolts. It's only a small yeah. one. You go there, when they're taking the tower they long, this bit there was actually for the phones. And they've actually, because they had a radar on the roof, they needed decent communication to other headquarters. Right. So you'll see they actually can go down this section to make more room. But these recesses are normally for the, where the mains cable will come in, you'd have a mains distribution and fuse board. And then it would disappear down the, what yeah. looks like a pipe there. Yeah, that would yeah. run off to our side. Probably here, the metal pipe you see sticking out on the side. Right. I would do the same there, but that would have been tele. Yeah, that's telephones. That, that would have been telecommunication. Where they cut off, you know, we telephone cables normally have a metal armory. You can see remains of. Well, it's this like probably yeah. would have linked to the command bunker, but it could also link further afield. Well, yeah, I can suppose it makes sense to be armoured as well, because the last thing they want is to have stuff for communication. Yes. Yeah. The, the main fortress telephone cable network, which links virtually all strong points, of that is all buried two meters deep. Right. Normally, and. Um, we're in a position, both the mains cables for electrics and the phones were normally put in different trenches. Right. If a bomb did get into one, it wouldn't take out the other. But in some cases, they're not that deep, like Corbier, they're about 78 centimetres because they're digging into granite. Yeah. They didn't do more than what was necessary. But unless a bomb directly hit the cut in which they backfilled, it'd be blast proof, bomb proof. So when, when one of those hooked a mine cable, yeah. it would detonate and shear the cable. Right, so this would have been towed behind a boat? Yeah, it wouldn't look like that. So you see it being towed behind it. It's missing the fins and that, but it'd be towed behind. The mine cable would hit it, and then yeah. it'll pull the mine cable out along the, and then it hit the explosive hooks underneath that, right. which would then sever the mine, it'll flow up, and then they fire it, it'll blow it up. Okay, so it was like a way of removing mine? Yes, there'd be ones on tethers. 
Okay. You see the mine tethered that's come along. Um, right. The mine would hit the cable, be yeah. pulled along to it, hits the, they explode and then float up. They normally fire that's it. Super. I can't imagine, I would have thought most of the mines around here anyway would have been placed by the German There's shark. There's virtually none laid. Um, in the harbour entrance here in Ingergi, they had minefields put across the entrance. Here was from like um, the end of the breakwater, Elizabeth Castle, running towards yeah. La Collette. They were massive things about that round, They're like half dome things, and they sat on the sea where they were electronically fired. Right. So there's a little bunker on the base of the pier at Elizabeth Castle, there's one by the bus station at the Collette, which was originally yeah, the, on the pier sticking the out. The one on Elizabeth Castle is the one at the end of the Hermitage, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yeah, in there would have been like um, various pegs on the board. Right. There would have been markers opposite somewhere. So you use the pegs to line up and where the peg ended, if you stood in the right position, you know exactly where that mine was on the seabed, no matter the state of the tide. So right. you knew if a boat was above it, you detonate it. There would have been a board in there, they could choose which mine to blow up. Or a whole lot in one go. This one's darker. I need to pinch Erica's light for this. Okay. It's like a portable moon. Right. I've got a, a bright 60 watt portable LED, a couple of them in the car. <coughs> right, so we've got double lighting here, guys. So. That was just a mount for optics. Right. So it's like a small sort of periscope or um, binoculars mounted on it, and they could work out the distance of the measuring circle. That's cool. Sorry, the angle. I think there's one. There's one for more. We've got the. Uh, that one's unusual in wood. Uh -huh. One's an MP3, it's steel. Yeah, th there's a wood one in, um, you know, the Moy over there. Yeah, I've uh, been in there once a long time ago. Yeah, you, you can climb up the rocks <coughs> and, stick it to yeah. and then it's in someone's garden. But oh, I'm in door again there, double stuff. That's immaculate, that one. So there are a lot of the barn style doors. It's not well. There's a lot of these barn style doors. Stable door, stable door. Stable yeah. door, yeah. They're designed to get on any opening which went into a room of had something dangerous in it or led to the outside. Yeah. So if anything hit the bottom half or that, you can use the top half to get out, plus they should hold back a fairly decent blast. They're really quite thick. Why more towers this looking guy? Wow. Yeah. That's when I took Hartigans around uh, MP3. You know, because there's a kid. There's a few ships under the moon. Yeah, you can just make them out. Let me see if yeah. I can get the camera on that few guys. Hang on. You need to get telephone in there. You're four of the Allies who not have that many ships between them. That was, what was his name? Old, uh, I forget. Blue, 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 Blue and Trip or something. something yeah, I'm Oscar, Oscar or something like that. <laughs> and the other one put his boots on the wrong feet. <laughs> he was in such a rush. So this would have been rear defense yeah. in a normal tower. So in MP3, there's a massive loophole on one of the floors here, and then the other floor has a loophole here. They're the normal entrance defense loophole. Right. Uh, here, uh, the bottom floor doesn't have this recess because it was a basement. The second floor, they decided to do it, and then they must have realized it was a waste of time. So the next two floors, they just made this bit flat because it, it's, it's totally useless. Yeah, because like you say, there's a, there's yeah. a grenade shield. So they, they made this to their plan, the standard plan, they realized they were Probably more, just put it in a straight wall than doing the hassle of the shuttering. So is it just this floor and maybe the one below that? No, it was, it's flat. Uh, it's just this one? Yeah, but it's the same on the floor where you came in the entrance because the entrance door is there. Yeah. But all the towers, if you go in Le Lond or Corbia, all the floors except the basement have this recess on every floor. Okay. So, I'm, I'm just getting ideas of what I'm going to do in my house. That's what <laughs> <laughs> and this tower was never really used. Each floor should have a stove on it, and there right. should be a pipe either on the left or the right in the, in that room where the stove would be put. Right. Um, here, the, none of that was put in, but MP2 yeah. and 3 have that. Sort okay. Of for the stoves on it. Here, next floor up, you'll see a big pipe in the wall there. That was, and there's like a range in here, I've been told. Single right. heating area. Well, I have noticed with this one, this one's actually, this is one of the ones you were saying upstairs has been concreted in. Yeah, the floor above where you saw the, the diorama. Would have been able to get in? Yeah, that's how people got in originally, so they're sealed up for security. They were done before the society took this place on. The, um, so you just thought it was a good idea to leave them in place then? There's one in, one in um, St Clements under a house that I photographed. Can we go here, but they never bought it in this one? 
But this would have been like storage. Stuff. Well, they, would, they would have been a wooden frame here, though. Yeah, they must have had something there. Yeah. They looked like they prepped for it, and they never went anywhere. It would have been a little wooden door, probably. So this one will never had like any slits. No, this anymore. is uh, each tower had a basement floor which didn't have a slit in it. That storage for ammo and everything in there. Yeah, it might serve as emergency quarters for an attack as well, so they could shelter down here during a major bomb. So and anything really down here. You're on the ground here. And there's a pipe there. Yeah, the idea was the air would be coming through the entrance defence room, right. the air pump there, and then it would be pushed in through pressure from that pump, so it would right. come in here. They would escape through there, so it would pull the air through the entire town. So it's allowing like a circulation of fresh air yes. to stay there to get out. Yes, but uh, MP3 laid on this blank off, so it defeats the object. <laughs> this one goes to a grill outside as well. MP if you go with the one at Corbier, you can see there's a grill in front under the lowest observation slip, which is for the same reason. 78, they look. Yeah, that's, that's old. old. 1960, that one. Fortuna. Paul's just looking at the engravings. 1966. There's 1961 there. I was born in 1970. Right, so as you can see it's getting dark now. Eric has gone down there with Malcolm and Paul. This is the last bunker we're doing this time because you can see the darkness, like I say. And microphone receivers died. So we're going to be using, as you've probably already noticed, the sound's different, the built-in mic on my camera. So if the sound's slightly different on this and slightly lower quality, I do apologize, but uh, microphone's died. So uh, let's go have a look at this last one. Right, so the Eric is sliding up this bit for me. They would have originally come up these rungs here, which you can see that would have been the original entrance. But uh, and I've got some on the other side of the doorway as well. But this bit you normally wouldn't necessarily notice because it's got a metal gate across it. And Paul was telling me the hoops on the side you can just see. They see have those there sticking out? Netting on. Yeah. So the planes flying over couldn't see it. There you go. You got some information from Erica, you guys are privileged now. Right, like I say though, I do apologise for the sound difference in this bunker, but um, yeah. So let's go in the bunker, There's actually this is actually lit. Oh, hang on, Erica's found something. Ah, oh, there you go, some information about the bunker there for you. I'm not sure how much Erica's camera's going to ruin that, but all well, the light, because it's reflecting, because it's shiny. Oh, there you go. But, uh, there you go. You can see there, that's a ventilation grate actually for the, for the bunker. Right, so we'll go inside, do this bunker. And that's the last one then. For this section, like I say, then we'll uh, pick up looking because it's dark now uh, with Malcolm in a couple of weeks and you'll be able to see the rest of um, Battery Lotheringdon. We'll do the gun points. On that. Pressure release valve for uh, for the air pump pumping in the air, then it would release through valves for various rooms. So there'd be a pressure release valve in the wall there. They always recess to stop them getting anti. -mum. Right. Can you so, see there's something mounted here as well behind the door? Yeah, that'd be the mains. There's um yeah. So the air comes out there from that room, and then would fill up this room and then go through that valve to outside when the doors were sealed. Okay, and that like you say was just the main. Yeah, electrics. Wiring. The mains cable would come up. It'd be like a, a little distribution and a fuse box above. You can actually got... follow it that way. Yeah. All the well, way everything in here is original, all the paintwork, all the blue trim. The circle on the door, the red circle on the door there, that means keep the door closed. So there you go. Keep shut sign in German. Because all the other ones that we've had so far, the bunkers we've done today, they've had like kind of nice, neat, kind of cement but ceilings, and these haven't. Now, the upper floor in the command bunker and the tower are steel. All the so, lower floors were um, this concrete. One's quite rusty as well. Yeah, so. it's been left untouched. Just to hold the ceiling up during a bombardment and also stop spalling, which is where the shell hit the roof, a percussion wave would go through and a bit would blow off inside. Right. Sort of thing. So, the same here, the plates and that would hold that in place. Oh, okay. They even puttied all the joints to hold any 
dust from coming through. Yeah. But it also means they save on shuttering during construction. These are the bases of eye girders or rolled steel uh, beams and then plates here rested on the bottom. Yeah. There's two bits of girder, so it makes the ceiling. Oh, that's quite cool. So there's also to protect it from damage during a bombardment. There's all sorts of like forethought gone into it before it's built, isn't there? Yeah, that's all, all sort of standard uh, construction. Like with the recess for the pressure release valves, which is a standard type bunker, the upper and the lower bit would be a 45 degree angle. Right. Probably put there, stop people putting stuff in the way. Okay. I think was the idea. You see one of the bunkers at Corbier, which is a true regal bell hazard. This one right. here is known as a 101V. Um, right. The V stands for the German word for simplified. Right. The construction of this is simplified. It doesn't have like radio antenna eye tubes in the entrances. Right, okay. Uh, it's, it's made as easily as possible. So it's about as basic as there, Scott? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's quite cool. And you've got your little lookout slot in. Yeah, so in the... So the pump would have been in here, would it? Yes, you can see where it would have been mounted there. That. So a stove? Yes. So a stove. stove the air pump would have been there. So the air comes in. This pipe feeds from two grills outside. Where the pipe drops down, there would have been a yellow dust filter box. Right. Flexible tube like the pumps you saw in the command bunker. Mm. There'd be one similar there. Then the, the pipe was going along the wall to where the air came out at the end. Right. It pressurised this room to just slightly higher than atmospheric pressure. Right. When that was achieved, the flat valve, which would have been on there, would have released, opened, oh, and then the air would have moved through right, okay. into the next room and then eventually outside. The idea was the pressurised, purified air filtered through the gas filters would be slightly higher than atmospheric pressure outside, so the air would be using out any possible gaps around doors or that, rather than any possible vacuums being caused, which could pull in contaminate them. Right, okay. That's why it was done like that. Oh, that's yeah. quite clever then. So. I like the way they've got patterning. I'm noticing as I'm following this around to show people stuff, you've got patterning on the top of this. This is unusual. All the, all the, like, the blue trim you can see on the bottom of the hooks yeah. around the doors, that's unusual for Genesis. And also the internal walls are yeah. a bit of a mixture of colour like pinks and uh, ochres, which is a camouflage paint for the outside, but they've done it inside here. Okay. We think they then lined this room with wood afterwards. The, the white panels there. A bit the like the hall. offices rooms used to be lined with wood. Yes, yeah. but it was done as an afterthought, probably because of the crew in here. Mm. They got pretty badly condensated, so to help reduce the condensation, they lined the walls with hardboard okay. afterwards to, to, try like, to make sort of a thermal barrier between the concrete wall and the, the heat of the people inside. And you've got another recess there. Yes, it So that would have been another main to take it. Yeah, yes, or phones or whatever. It would have been a standard part of the design of the bunker. So the metal fixings and stuff on all the old originals? Then. Yeah, set for bunks. So three bunks on each twin set of hooks. You can see the hook on the ceiling where the uh, chains from the front of the bunker. This ceiling's lower than the other bunks as well, so it must have been quite close together, those bunks. Um, yeah, but the hooks are standard, so they'd be spaced about the same. The top one would have been lower though because of the Gap from it to the ceiling. Yeah, well. Is this stuff found in? Yes. So that's all stuff from here. Yeah, a bit of pipe, a wasser can, which is for drinking water. Right. Um, some of the other metal bits, I don't know, there's a couple of junction boxes there. The metal thing with the round porcelain holder in would be the fuse box to go in the recess in there. The okay. main. Cool. And then, as Paul pointed out, just next to us there, where that circle is in the floor, is where they would have had their. So, stove for their cooking. We've gone through there. And we've got the tiles on the floor again there. Health and safety thoughts of there has been found. <laughs> now the entrance to Pence Loupar is an unusual freeze painted around it, and the Loupar has been painted blue as well. That's quite good. But the other one detonated and with its rook sticks out of the side because the bunker's built on the ground, literally. They killed all the crew in there instantly with the compression waves the shell went through. Wow. That's one of the reasons why the commander surrendered there, he's like stuff this, and the whole crew just dies like that, sort of like, yeah, he surrendered. But if you ever go there, it's, it's yeah, the whole, like, something's gone and can go the whole through, the, but it's the shell. So through the, gone from the thick concrete wall, it's been pushed out as it went through, then through the loop hole there, like the other end of the room, which is about as long as this. 
puncher and where you see the recess there would be a stack of eye girders and a second stack as well. You can yeah. see where that brick wall's part done. It's kind of it's like that half with after the wall. Yeah, it's halfway down, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody's pumped through after the wall to see what's behind them. They probably thought it was connecting to all the new boat. Tank. And that yeah. comes up obviously above ground up there. Yeah, you can see it on the side of the bunker. It's a, a note house came. That's slightly different to the one that Paul showed me in Altico, because the one in Altico had little like metal rungs. Yeah, they board. should be in that two recesses where you see that loose brick. Yeah. They would sit in there. Right, so that's it for the command and lookout sections of Battery Lothering, which would be the very front sections um, in front of the car park if you've ever visited. Um, in the meantime, um, I will leave you with some scenes uh, of the drive home etc that me and Erica filmed on the way back from filming that first time um, and I'll see you next week in part three on the following week in part four I know I said I was going to do some more hotel videos um, I haven't had time to do a lot of research on the hotels I was going to do which is why there's been a bit of a delay so I do apologize for that um, but anyway for me um, and Erica, who's actually I don't know where Erica is, but from her, for me and Erica anyway, um, I will see you uh, in the next video. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, supporting the channel. Take care.